Today, we're gonna to be making this helmet. Using this, let's make it. Let's start off with the core. I have a bunch of support pieces here that connect onto the main support piece. These include the side, both dome supports, and a small cheek support. Let's build it up. There we go. Now you can start to see the helmet outline taking shape, especially with the dome. Speaking of the dome, we're gonna start with that. Now this dome is a bit different from my other projects because I made a piece specifically for this helmet. I start off by curving the piece between my fingers and then gluing the darts closed. In case you're new around here, darts are the triangular slits between sections of cardboard that close up and give it a rounded look. And this piece is starting to come together. Now the next thing to fill out is the groove towards the lower back of this half of the dome. This section is a little odd because the front part of it actually sits flush with the base of the dome. I had no idea this was the case until I was doing research on this helmet. Once you've repeated this for the other side, we gotta glue both halves together and create a nice cohesive dome. Also, if you'd like to build this helmet yourself, the templates are available right now in my Etsy store. Link is in the description. Anyways, to complete the dome, the fin is next. It's really simple, just a long strip of cardboard and two outer panels that it gets glued onto. There it is. I'm gonna set this aside for later. Next up, the faceplate. Here's what it'll look like once it's glued on. Why not add the fin too? Perfect. Looking great. Woo! <laughs> totally didn't almost die there, but uh, let's get back to work with the upper cheek parts. I'm starting with this piece, which just gets curved and glued onto the middle of the cheek. A quick little test fit, and then it gets glued on. There's just a couple more pieces to round out the cheek compartments, being the back and the bottom. There we go. The cheek tubes are next. Just like everything else, they get curved, then glued, then attached onto the helmet. Time for the most complicated part of the helmet, which is the chin. This section takes a lot of effort to get right. I start here at the center of the chin, where the aerators will later go. The hole in the middle is actually for better airflow, so you can breathe. Here is that annoying piece. It looks really intimidating, but if you go slow curving it, and just make sure to pay attention to the direction to bend it, then it'll end up just fine. I'd say this is definitely the most complicated bit on the whole helmet, but once it's done, it looks pretty amazing. Then, just do it all over again for the other side. There's the chin. One thing I noticed about the helmet at this point though is that the face was really, really wide and way too flat. So I cut a few triangles out of it and glued those closed to give it a much better shape. And now it's all flush. Finally, the fin can be glued on. Finally, the fin can be glued on. A little bit more work needs to be done to the center of the chin, with this one bridge piece. I also wanted to make the helmet shape a bit better by removing a bit of material from these supports to tighten it up. This piece extends off the back of the main faceplate. Gotta get rid of that cardboard block in the lens, cause I gotta see. 
so I cut out where the lens would be and added extra support to hold it together. I also added these tiny little flanges at the lower point of each side because they look cool and they happen to be on the actual prop too. Back at the uh, back of the helmet, I'm adding some walls to figure out the rear of the ear. I swear that was a bar. This piece finally makes a dent towards finishing the back. It gets curved and glued on, same as usual. This large back part is the final complicated bit to add on the helmet. It gets curved, the darts get closed up, a small wall gets attached, and then that whole section is glued on. Let's do the other side. Rounding off the back, there's only a few pieces left. We have these triangular parts, this inlet detail, which needed some extra support to sit where I wanted it, but now it's all good. Then we have the back greeble, which is two parts that get glued together. And then that assembly itself gets glued on the helmet. Another part I wanted to add to my helmet was this bottom lip. It's on the one in the movie and I think it gives the whole helmet a really well-rounded look. Here's where I laid out the teeth. So now we gotta cut them out. The teeth can also allow extra airflow to move through the helmet, which is a good thing, I guess. Boom, done. Here's the ears and all the parts that go into them. Oops. There's a bevel that sits at the top of the ear, which is three parts all glued together. It is then glued onto the main ear panel which then gets attached to the side of the helmet. The three little legs or whatever that extend off of it had to be glued on as well. I gave it my best effort to cover up some of the corrugation with sections of a paper bag, but most of it we will deal with later. I decided to use toothpicks to get the neural texture that we see on this circular bit in the movie, right on the back. With this final detail glued on in the back, that is the end of the construction. Here, I have some magic stuff, a cup and mixing sticks, brushes, and gloves, which will all be used for the next step. Okay, it isn't really magic, it's resin. For mine, parts A and B get mixed together in equal portions, and then it gets applied over the whole helmet. I did two coats waiting for the recommended time to cure. Here's the nice hardened helmet. As you can see, it's pretty hard. But since the outer shell is nice and stable, I can take out the supports. It's really weird to do this because I haven't tried on the helmet to see if it fits yet because of the supports. However, we're not done with the resin. I do a layer of resin on the inside, this time adding on strips of fiberglass cloth across the whole interior. Once soaked in resin, these strips get very, very strong. Here's a look at all that fiberglass. Ah, 
I think it's safe to say it's pretty strong. But the helmet is pretty rough as of right now, and that's not what I want. So with a bit of sandpaper and some crazy dedication, we can get rid of those high spots and sand down the helmet. With this helmet, I used no power tools, which means it was all hand sanded. I don't know what led me to bring this pain upon myself. I'd highly recommend using a mouse sander if you've got one. Here you can see all those deep grooves that are still on the helmet. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna shoot it with a quick layer of primer to act as a binder for the next step, which is applying Bondo over the whole helmet. Now Bondo is traditionally used in cars, but it can actually be used on helmets as well. This stuff is pretty toxic though, and sometimes can react with certain spray paints. So an alternative for this is wall compound, like spackling. A benefit to using Bondo is that it does sand really, really well. I use 200 to 400 grit to get a nice smooth finish. Then I hit it with some automotive filler primer from Duplicolor. This stuff worked decently well, but it is a little pricey. I'm sure here you can see that it has a very light flow out the nozzle. In between layers of primer and bondo, I wet sanded the helmet. Wet sanding allows for a much smoother surface using lower grits and less effort. This is after one layer of Bondo and primer. Not the smoothest, but it's getting there. I added more Bondo to the helmet, this time using a card to smooth it out. This ended up working out very well, especially for small imperfections. Once I was happy with the finish of the helmet, I sprayed a final layer of filler primer. All this hard work is about to pay off in the next step, which also happens to be my favorite part. I give the whole helmet a few light coats of white satin paint, waiting 15 minutes in between each one. Here I have some fine masking tape, which I use to outline all the areas I want to mask off. Right now, we're doing the gray. This works really well for sealing off all the edges. I put a layer of blue tape on top of that, and then some scrap paper to cover up all the larger areas. Then take off the tape. And here's where all the black is going to go. Go slow when peeling off the tape because we don't want to pull up any paint. That would suck. You could stop here and have a nice fresh clone helmet, but I want to do a shock trooper, so I masked off that specific design, which took way, way too long. Oh. After getting a good whiff of liquid latex, which smells awful by the way, I masked out where I wanted all the paint chips to go. And then I painted it red. Taking off the tape has to be the best thing ever. I also used a wooden stick to help remove the liquid latex and reveal the white underneath. It's time to dirty up the helmet. I mixed a load of black paint with a little bit of water. This creates a black wash. Now there's only a few things left to do. I took that black wash, painted it over the whole helmet, then wiped it away a few seconds later with a paper towel. This step is really, really easy to go overboard with, so go slow. My main goal is to fill in the cracks with black paint and then stain the rest of the helmet slightly. Now it's time for the lens. 
I took a face shield and sprayed it with some soapy water and then applied some 5% window tint on it. Once you squeegee out the bubbles, you're left with a nice dark piece of plastic that you can see out of. I cut it out and then installed it into the helmet, along with some mesh for the teeth and then the chin details. With the earpieces on, the helmet is done. That's it. If you want to make this project for yourself, the templates are down in the description. See you guys next time.